What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris. It's your boy, Chris. It's another amazing episode of Financial Patient. This channel is all about making money, saving money, building generational wealth, and financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. On this channel, everybody, I give you an MBA level of investing in financial knowledge for free here on YouTube. And the things that people typically spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn in business and in grad school, I give to you for free here on Financial Patient. And as a guy who has an MBA, I take pride in being able to tell you that. Before I get started, I also want to give a shout out to Killick Solutions. They're one of my sponsors. If you need digital marketing, website development, or something to essentially edit your YouTube videos, they are the best in the business at meeting all of your digital needs. Also, please hit the notification bell, okay, so you know when I drop new content, and I drop new content weekly. If you are not familiar with the fact, I've always been somewhat of a renaissance guy. Uh, when I got into boxing, the guys that I boxed with and I sparred with were shocked because they all had all been to prison, and I was studying mechanical engineering, and I was the only guy in the gym that had ever been to prison. When I got into mixed martial arts and Muay Thai kickboxing and jiu-jitsu, my teammates at the time who I was competing with, they were all flat out shocked when I found when they found out that I traveled all over the world at the same time I was kickboxing and doing jujitsu and boxing and everything, uh, dancing in salsa competitions in Colombia, Singapore, and in Europe. And when I got into corporate America with my engineering degrees, as well as with my MBA, my coworkers were all shocked when they found out that I got in rings and I actually competed and I sparred and I fought in uh, sanctioned kickboxing fights in rings and in cages and in mixed martial arts competitions. So I've always been uh, drawn to human beings that maximize their mind, their body, and their soul, and athletes that are seemingly more than an athlete, because I have always been more than an athlete. I have always been more than an entrepreneur. I have always been more than an engineer. And on this podcast, everybody, we're going to talk about and one of those people who are absolutely more than an athlete. So sit down, everybody, as we discuss recent NBA champion, multi, multi-millionaire, and Harvard professor, Jalen Brown. So with that, everybody, let's get started. Let's get started. Jalen Brown was born in 1996, and he comes from a family of educators. Jalen Brown's mother, Michelle, got her doctorate and her PhD from the University of Michigan, and his father was a seven-foot heavyweight professional boxer. To all my parents out there, Jalen's mother and father pushed him to excel in school, and instead of him just playing video games all day and watching TV, they pushed him to excel in the books, and they pushed him to always be a straight-A student. This was pivotal as Jalen Brown took honors classes and eventually graduated near the top of his high school uh, class at Wheeler High School in Marietta, Georgia. As a current NBA player and a current NBA champion, it's not obviously a stretch to imagine that Jalen Brown as a high school athlete had an extremely illustrious high school basketball career. And that's exactly what he had. In 2014, in his junior year in high school, Jalen Brown averaged 24 points per game, eight rebounds, four assists, and two steals. In 2014, Jalen Brown was on the under-18 FIBA Americas team, and that team won the gold medal. In his senior year in high school, Jalen Brown led his school to a 6A state championship where he averaged 28 points per game, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals on route to a 30-3 and record where they won the state championship. It should also be noted that Jalen Brown was voted Mr. Basketball of the State of Georgia, Class 6A Player of the Year, the Gatorade Player of the Year, and he was voted a McDonald's All-American in 2015. Jalen Brown was rated as a five-star recruit in 2015, and he was ranked the fourth best player in the country behind Ben Simmons, Scala Bissier, and Brandon Ingram. When you're a McDonald's All-American, everybody, particularly in basketball, you can literally pick any Division I basketball program or professional European pro club in the world and start playing there. And something I found fascinating about Jalen Brown, this kind of gets him back to the whole concept that he is more than an athlete, is that given his basketball starting and pedigree, he could have literally played ball anywhere in the country and anywhere in the world. He could have went to Europe and made millions of dollars, just like Brandon Jennings did, and played one year of professional basketball overseas. He could have went to Duke. He could have went to UConn. He could have went to a lot of blue blood schools. But this brother decided to go 3,000 miles away to a non-basketball powerhouse called UC Cal Berkeley because he liked the academics at Cal Berkeley. Yeah, you heard that right, everybody. This guy literally turned down millions of dollars to play professional basketball for a year or two overseas in Europe. And he instead decided to go to UC Cal Berkeley. Why? Because he wanted to go to a college that had excellent academics. Like I said, everybody, Jalen Brown is a lot more than an athlete. As a freshman at UC Cal Berkeley, Jalen Brown enrolled in a master's level uh, course in the school's cultural studies of sports and education program while simultaneously training, practicing, lifting weights, playing basketball games, and devoting roughly 50 hours a week to playing Division I basketball. This guy was playing Division I basketball, everybody. He was taking master level courses as a freshman at UC Cal Berkeley. What's also interesting is that in addition to taking master's level courses and playing Division I basketball, he was also on the Cal Berkeley Chess Club and took Spanish classes and became fluent. 
He said he actually had the goal. He said he wanted to speak five languages fluently before he was 25. Even though Jalen Brown only spent one year at Cal Berkeley, before he declared for the NBA draft, he made his presence felt. From a basketball standpoint, in his long year in college, he averaged 15 points per game, six rebounds, and two assists, and he was ranked the first team all Pac-12 honors and was named Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. Jalen Brown declared for the NBA draft at the end of his freshman year, and he was drafted number three overall by the Boston Celtics in 2017. Before going any further, everybody, please hit the notification bell so you know when I drop new content. And please hit that like button, please comment, subscribe. I love giving you guys free content and it thoroughly helps the algorithm. Thank you. Next. Interestingly enough, Jalen Brown's number one knock against him when he got drafted in the NBA was the fact that he was criticized for being too smart. <laughs> Not only is this a little racist, it's completely ignorant. According to ESPN's Anscape, Jalen Brown was declared as because he is so smart, it might be intimidating to some teams, especially if he starts questioning authority. And Jalen Brown has far too many interests outside of basketball to be a productive NBA player. As I stated earlier, everybody, yeah, you heard that right. The black Jalen Brown was literally not by ESPN and by certain scouts for being too smart to be an NBA player. The stupidity of that statement is literally short-sighted, it's dumb, and yeah, I'm going to flat out say it's racist. And in some ways, Jalen Brown has admitted that this reputation of him being, quote unquote, too smart to be an athlete literally fueled him when he got to the NBA. And it also helped because he said he got he was booed mercilessly by the Boston Celtics fans as he was widely ranked by ESPN to be the number one guy in that draft in 2017 to be a bust in the NBA. <laughs> Upon hearing everybody boo him, Jalen Brown said he made up in his mind that he was basically going to push himself to insane limits to be the best basketball player on the court and the most productive entrepreneur off the court while he was in the NBA. And he said he has used us to absolutely dominate the league as well as to don dominate his finances. In his rookie year, Jalen Brown averaged seven points per game, three rebounds, one assist, and he's named the all-rookie second team. In his second year in the NBA, Jalen Brown averaged 15 points per game, five rebounds, and two assists, and the Celtics lost in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals to LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. The criticisms began heavily for uh, Jalen Brown from the Boston Celtics media in the start of his third season in 2018. The Boston Globe criticized him for taking too many mid-range shots, not enough three-pointers, and he had an overall lack of focus when it came to playing basketball. ESPN's Jackie McMullen actually uh, went so far as to say, nobody has disappointed the Celtics fans more than Jalen Brown, and many were openly calling for Jalen Brown to be traded. In his fourth year in the NBA, Jalen Brown signed an extension worth $115 million with the M. And in his fourth year, he averaged 20 points per game, seven rebounds, and two assists. Not bad for an NBA bus, if I may say so myself. The Celtics that year advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals for the third time in his four-year NBA career, but they were eliminated by the Miami Heat in the games in uh, game six. In his fifth year in the NBA, Jalen Brown made his first NBA All-Star game and scored 46 points against the New York Knicks on opening night. In his sixth year in the NBA, Jalen Brown it made his first All-NBA selection that was named to his second All-NBA All-Star game. Because this is a finance channel, I want to spell out how important financially it is for an NBA player to make an All-NBA team, as there are serious financial bonuses that come with being selected as an All-NBA player. Another notable choice for Jalen Brown was that he decided to not hire an agent due to the fact that the NBA contracts were prograded based on draft status. Jalen Brown instead relied on a team of advisors that included basketball Hall of Famers Isaiah Thomas and Sharif Abdul Rahim. And many people initially laughed at Jalen Brown for being too dumb to hire an agent and for the staff were hiring former NBA players to help him with his contracts. <laughs> but these folks apparently looked like absolute fools as Jalen Brown signed the NBA's richest contract in history, a five-year Supermax contract worth $300 million dollars that easily surpassed the Nikola Jokic uh, maximum contract at the time of $276 million. And Jalen Brown was laughing all the way to the bank. Because see, when you make those all NBA teams, you qualify for something called the NBA Supermax contract. And when you qualify for a Supermax contract, it allows you to sign $300 million type deals. <laughs> In 2014, Jalen Brown and the Boston Celtics defeated the Dallas Mavericks and won the Boston franchise's 18th NBA championship. And Jalen Brown was named the NBA Finals MVP. And that's not bad for a brother who was considered too smart to be in the NBA, who was clowned for being a nerd growing up, and was brutally mocked as an athletic bust seven years earlier by the Boston Celtics fans. 
now that I've talked about the athletic achievements of Jalen Brown, I want to talk about what I consider to be vastly more important, um, which is the financials behind it, the, his entrepreneurial ventures, and what he's doing to help his community. And I, as I said, I've always been a Renaissance guy, and I'm more than an athlete. I've literally never had a person walk up to me and ask me, are you an engineer? And I take pride in that. And Jalen Brown, I take pride in the fact as well, this brother is doing so many amazing things off the court. So... Jalen Brown became the youngest person to deliver a lecture at Harvard University. So technically speaking, Jalen Brown is the only person in history to be an active NBA player and to be a college professor at Harvard University. At 22 years old, Jalen Brown was the youngest person to be elected to a vice president of the NBA Players Association. Jalen Brown de delivered a TED Talk at MIT, and Jalen Brown speaks fluent Spanish and has a passable understanding of Portuguese and Italian. Jalen Brown was named an MIT Media Labs fellow and has taught classes at MIT as well. And Jalen Brown was offered a job, get this everybody, to work at NASA <laughs> while he was an active NBA player. Yeah, that same year he signed a $300 million contract, NASA offered this brother a full-time job to come work for them. Think about that for a minute. Jalen Brown, something else I also find amazing to do as an African-American myself, is that he does collaborations with MIT to create a bridge program that mentors inner city Boston youth and high school students of color to pursue college degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math. And as a mechanical engineer, I love hearing that kind of stuff because I want to see a lot more people of color, black and Hispanic, going into the STEM fields. And because this is a finance channel, Jalen Brown has taken a significant portion of his $300 million NBA contract to fight income inequality in the city of Boston and the greater Massachusetts area. And he does that to teach inner city children uh, financial literacy and other school advocacy initiatives. It truly is amazing to me that this gentleman, Jalen Brown, is playing professional basketball literally on the highest level because he just won finals NBA, NBA MVP. And he's basically taking his hard earned money and investing into his community and producing the next generation of America's millionaires, lawyers, and doctors. See, it's things like this that I honestly say that our country needs to push a lot more. I've always, once again, been drawn to people that are interesting dichotomies and that dominate very, very different industries. I have always been drawn to Navy SEALs that become astronauts like Johnny Kim. I have always been drawn to NFL players that become neurosurgeons like Myron Roll. And I have always been drawn to NBA players that essentially get job offers to work at NASA. Why? Because to me, you can be so much more than what people claim you to be. You can be so much more than an athlete. You can be so much more than an engineer. And whenever I meet people that literally dominate their mind, their body, and their soul, it is an amazing thing to see. And I honestly wish that my community would push more people like Jalen Brown. Because this brother, once again, he's worked, at, he's got a job offers to work at NASA. He's taught at MIT. He's taught at Harvard. He's got, he basically designs robotic programs. And financially, he's investing hundreds of millions of his dollars into businesses that are going to basically build generational wealth for him for foreseeable future. Closing this channel is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And it's all about financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me at any point, everybody. The link is below. I'm not giving you financial advice on this channel. You must make responsible decisions based on the thorough, independent research that you do for yourself. And thanks for listening, everybody. Please follow me and check out my website at www.therealfinancipation.com. Instagram, The Real Finance Patient. Spotify, Finance Patient. My TikTok is Finance Patient. It's like it's spelled in this hoodie. My Facebook page is Financial Patient, and you can check out my financial blog, Financial Patient, as well. Additionally, check out some of my digital my e products below as well. Everybody hit that notification bell. Please like, please comment, please share, please subscribe to that notification button so you know when I drop new content. And thanks, Coco Solutions, for all of these dope graphics. It's your boy, Chris, and I'm out. Peace.